welcome back. I have to say that the idea of let them eat cake is, is a good one, but the idea of let them have their cake and eat their candles too is a great one. And I know you're going to love it as much as I do because now you can eat your candles and your cake. And I am not joking. Lori Sandler is an architect by training, but a lover of all things beautiful and detailed. And as she watched the wax puddle and pool over her son's beautiful, fresh birthday cake, she thought, this can't be it. There has to be a better way. And so what did she do with her eye on every single detail? She figured out how to make edible candles. And that's what we're going to talk about because, you know, here at Good Day, we are all about the celebrations early and often and candles. Yes. Thank you, Lori. Welcome to Good Day, Orange County. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I am honored. This is so much fun. We all love celebrating. We, I joke in my family that we would celebrate the opening of the refrigerator if we could. But, and sometimes <laughs> candles are just the thing you need. Tell us, oh my goodness, tell us how you got here. This is you know a far cry from architecture. And you didn't just go to somebody and say, hey, figure it out. You took the long road. I took the very long road. Yes, I did. Um, yes, I have a master's in architecture. And then I stayed home to raise three boys. And I didn't keep my toe in the water, so to speak. So I didn't really have an entrance wrap back, route back into the workforce. And so I was always thinking, you know, what, what could I do? And I had ideas that I would take only until they cost too much or they took too much of a, um, I, I don't know, like, weren't my idea. And so anyway, I was primed and I was also very emotional when my youngest, our youngest son turned 12. It was sort of the last hurrah to be at a party. And so it, it was sort of the, the right moment of an aha idea. So I'm watching the wax candles ruin his cake, as you said. And I thought, how hard can that be? Like, that's actually an idea that I think I could do without too many middlemen, because so many women that I knew baked fabulous cookies or cakes and they started a side hustle with it that then turned into a business and I thought well chocolate candles can't be that different and in fact as most things that we endeavor to do are that it was much more complicated so luckily in Chicago they had um, two different schools that I could take classes at there was a something called the chocolate academy and the French pastry school and those places got me just far enough along so that they and luckily it was pre-COVID and so classes were were working in person and that made a real difference also to to talk with people that were there and to further sort of my idea and um, both of those classes came with uh, lists of suppliers and so that got me in and, you know, into the next steps of who can I talk to and how much would something like this cost to manufacture and who makes custom molds and how would I package something. And so it took me um, really a full year from the idea to have a workable product. So at Graham's 13th birthday, which actually coincided with his becoming a bar mitzvah, I don't, maybe your audience is familiar with that, but I we were having a big luncheon um, to celebrate that. And so my goal was to have 100 candles for that event so that each person could have a cupcake with a candle in it. And I could get feedback because I had dark chocolate and milk chocolate and I had different lengths of wicks and different diameters of wicks. And so there was a lot of sort of, it was a large focus group for me. It was. Uh, but, what a great way to do market research. You know, one would think, but <laughs> I also didn't, like I had as many things, the idea, but the execution was a little bit lacking. I didn't put like cards for people to fill out to give me their idea, you know, so, so even there, I, I did learn a lot, but I didn't learn everything that I could. Um, and so, you know, then I started to sell, it was, I, when I talked to people in packaging, I learned just how expensive it would be to create custom packaging. And I thought, well, I'll sell them in a box of six and maybe I'll sell them in a box of 12. And, and what I learned very quickly was that you really need to focus on one thing and just get it out there. And so the idea was I would put them in a box of three for 
I grant you three wishes or past, present, future. That was kind of the concept so that it would work for anyone's celebration at any age. And I took them to local bakeries and, um, you know, they said, well, that's interesting. We'll try it. We'll, we'll buy a dozen boxes. And then maybe three months later, they'd say, yeah, that worked all right. We'll, we'll take another dozen boxes. And so it felt very much like a hobby instead of like a business. And I feel that I've already taken too long in answering your one question. Did I get to where you wanted to? <laughs> Not at all. No, the story, it, the journey is the story, right? And all the things, first of all, being an entrepreneur, being a mom, and then, you know, that's such a, an it's such a ripe environment for ideas and things that you wish could be better or different. But not everyone takes the time or has the thought to move ahead and create what they see or what they would like. They go looking for someone else who's done it. When you fall on something that really hasn't been done and you recognize that, of course, I mean, I'm shocked that it took you a year from idea to reality. That's not a long time at all, especially dealing with something as delicate as chocolate because that's that's a lot of you know little pieces off to the side right it has to be packaged in a way that it can be it can have a shelf life and you need to you know there are a lot more requirements on food than if it were a birthday card for instance for so sure and and the year just got me to like prototypes it did not get me to saleable product that okay. took that took a, a while longer but how long now has it been well, um, so the idea I think was in 2012. Okay. So here we are. It's it's been quite a long time. Bob, who is now really my partner in the business, um, who's also my husband, he doesn't like to say 12 years. You know, he likes to he likes to shorten it because he he feels when he started getting involved, which was really when we were ready enough to go to food trade shows and really hit the market. He liked he believes that's when it was sort of birthed, but you know, not me because I was there. I was there from the nitty gritty beginning. Right. Well, you you actually gave birth to it. So yes. And thank you, Bob, for joining in. And I'm guessing that that has allowed you to expand the business side of it because it's very hard. Take it from someone who actually knows. It is hard to be the artist and the manager. You know, being the person who is the talent and brings forward the ideas and is able to visualize and then implement an idea is not necessarily the same person who should be bringing it to market and tallying the spreadsheets and you know researching the distribution there are specialists for those things but there those of us who create stuff it's you are it's so not, right bob actually his his nickname for me is chairman of sales prevention <laughs> <laughs> because we'll have people ready to buy, you know, I'll order for all my stores a master case and I'll say, no, well, maybe you want to try a half a master and maybe, you know, see how you like it in the first couple stores first. Like I, <laughs> I'm, it's so personal to me. I want everybody to love it. And of course, you know, not everything is for every person. So, but chocolate is for most people. And yes. I think if you're going to create something that does have a life ahead, Starting with chocolate is never a bad idea. I was sharing with you a little bit earlier in my family, we have three camps. Those who don't eat chocolate at all, they just don't Weirdos. like it. It's not even a thing. Um, or in my mother's case, it makes her sick. So oh, we well, don't that's... let her do that. Uh, then there's the middle camp, which is my brother, who is the milk chocolate, white chocolate guy. And then the rest of his family who call him a, you know, a, a fair weather chocolatier kind of guy. He's like, well, they they don't think the people who love dark chocolate, the rest of his family don't think milk chocolate and white chocolate should be called chocolate. So, so we have all these varieties when I really thought about it, like, yeah, you know, it's more complicated than you think. <laughs> For sure. So it's a lot of fun though, but overall, it sounds to me like if, if Bob jumped on the bandwagon, have people been supportive of your process and of your newfound life? Absolutely. It's really, it's, it, you know, people say it takes a village to raise a child. And I would say it's the same to 
found a company and it, you really do rely on more than a little help from your friends and family. Um, at the beginning, my dad was cutting the wicks for me. And, uh, you know, even so things that I hadn't realized, like when you start in a food company, there are different, there are cottage laws where you could work out of your home kitchen if you're selling at farmer's markets in some places. But in most cases, you need a commercial kitchen. And even shared commercial kitchen space um, that you rent by the hour, a lot of times you're sharing it with people in catering or other um, food products that take an oven that's blazing hot. Well, you can't work with chocolate in that situation. So even finding a space to work, there, there were just so many different levels of learning. Um, and now, you know, to get to the point where we need to ship in a refrigerated truck, but we're not large enough a business to hire a full truck. So then it's called LTL, less than truckload. And each new thing, you know, e each new customer that we get has their own ideas for us. And um, we love to listen and we love to learn. And so we've that that's part of what you're asking, I guess, is have people been supportive and in, incredibly so. Yeah, that's the genius and the willingness to listen. And people will always love you for that. So how is it going now? Like, where are you now? So 2024 has really been extraordinary, like pitch me, pinch me kind of year. Um, we were on Shark Tank in March. We, we filmed last summer. Uh, yeah, June of 2023, but the show didn't air until March. So we had this huge secret that we could not talk about that was just, you know, killing us, like so exciting. And um, and they don't let you know at Shark Tank until three weeks in advance if they are even going to put you on TV. So there was the chance that it might never have happened, but fortunately it did. And that was just another level of, you know, just exposure and activity for us, you know, getting the website ready for an influx of interest and orders. Um, it used to be I picked, packed and shipped every single order with my own two hands. And I knew that I wouldn't be able to do that. So we took on a partner that does that for us. And there were some hiccups there and a learning curve. Um, and then we had and then another just amazing opportunity. We do, as I said, um, some food trade shows. One of them is called the Fancy Food Show. That's in January. And then there's another summer one in um, June annually. And George Duran, a chef, saw us at the Fancy Food Show, the most recent one, and he loved our product. And I got just a blind email from him and he said, I'd love some samples and, you know, I want to put you on Good Morning America on a segment that I'm doing. I know, it, it, like amazing. And then here's where chairman of sales prevention comes in. I, I said, you know, we're so grateful. We're so excited. Is it possible that you could do it in cooler weather so that, you know, it's better for our shipping? And he's like, no, no, sorry, this is happening in August, <laughs> which, you know, a, a, like thrill, like absolute thrill. Um, and so, between those two things, and then also we are for the first time, um, we're changing the shape. We have a new shape of our candles, these little bunches of balloons. Traditionally, we had this long, narrow candle, which um, I had my my friend Michelle made this necklace for me out of, oh my God. Out of candles. <laughs> we had a watch party for Shark Tank and she she came and brought this this necklace That's for me. Fabulous. I love it. <laughs> I feel like I only have a few opportunities to wear it. I have to say it's this is delicious. one. <laughs> yeah, this is one. So this was our original shape of candle. Um and then we we realized that you know we sort of thought of it as the hero candle. Um and it's, you know, it wasn't like, well, I want to put 20 of those on a cake. I, the, the wicks are short. They don't function like a traditional candle. The chocolate doesn't fuel the wick. So you have a limited amount of time to light it and use it. And um, we, we realized that a lot of people loved these, but they wanted, my son is turning three. I want a number three. Or, you know, I don't want to tell what my age is, but I do want to celebrate. And so we created a different shape candle. Um, we have these... I brought some over. I should have had them ready to go. So we we created, they're a new shape. They're like a, a balloon, a bunch of balloons and they have messages and they have numbers. Okay. And we, 
we have been waiting for many months for a hole punch machine to come from China and get installed in our manufacturers. And we are just about ready to go. And um, we have some really exciting new stores as partners. And so we're getting ready for our biggest manufacturing run yet. And, um, and, and a whole new crop of stores that's gonna, that's gonna bring our candles in. I'm thrilled and terrified. So, so when people are in the Chicagoland area, they're going to find you in stores, but they can find you across the country, right? They can. Our, our, so we had two, a few really big sort of moments in the um, evolution of the business. One was I submitted them to an online launch site called The Gromit. And that was uh, in 2016, the Gromit put us on their website and it was personally and professionally one of the most exciting days of my life. And that sort of convinced us that the product had legs. We got orders from people in 49 states in the first month we shipped, you know, everywhere. And it was, it was incredible. And that sort of transitioned us to work with somebody that could make the candles for us. Cause I, I just couldn't keep that up. Um, and so then we were able to do like more gift kind of to the public shows. There's one in Chicago called the one of a kind show, which is just an, a phenomenal, really fun show, especially for holiday gifts, anyone shopping. And at that show, just somebody came up to my booth and she said, you know, my sister has some bakeries. And it turned out that her sister had two nothing bunt cake bakeries in Arizona. And I didn't follow up with her sister because it seemed like that's too good to be true. It would never happen. And her sister introduced, so she sent them to her sister. Her sister sent them to the corporate office and the corporate office got in touch with me and said, we're really interested. We'd love to test your candles in some of our stores. So that was sort of the next big moment when we became a vendor partner to Nothing Bun Cakes. Um, it doesn't mean we're in all the stores. We would love to be. It just means that they, the franchisees have the opportunity if they would like to bring us in. And so that, that brought us to a next level, which was a thrill and an honor. Um, and then from the fancy food show, we met a buyer from Publix, which is a huge chain in the Southeast, primarily Florida and Georgia. And that brought us to next level. Like that, as Bob says, is our marquee customer. Um, and so Publix tested us and it was right early, like the very beginning of the pandemic when people weren't gathering for parties and blowing on cakes maybe wasn't something that people were excited about. <laughs> And the test went really well. Um, and so then they they first tested us in a very small number of stores, but shipping to four of their distribution centers. And then they said, okay, we're going to try you in a whole region. And then they said, that went great. We're going to roll you out to all our stores. And that that truly put us on the map. Like that was, I, I forever and ever, I will be grateful to the Gromit and to Nothing Bun Cakes and to Publix because it really does take those kind of partnerships, you know, people to believe in you um, as a small business and as a food business where, you know, a lot of times you see someone and you think, well, that looks interesting. Let's see if they're still around in six months. Yeah, exactly. But for our purposes, certainly we can find the product on letthemeatcandles.com, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I want to make sure that even if they're not, if our viewers are not near any of these, they can in fact find you and we've been showing pictures of the product as we've been talking about it. So for people who didn't understand completely, once the wick burns its little bit of energy, then you just pick it out and eat the candle. A hundred percent. It's like eating a chocolate bar. It's really premium chocolate. It's delicious. It's magic, if you ask me. <laughs> Lori Sandler, thank you so much for coming to share with us today. I hope everybody will have their cake and eat their candles too very, very soon. And we will be right back.